Good morning and happy 2018. Starting the day in Jerusalem, meeting Shlomo Mervis from Intelligo Group, heading to Tel Aviv after that. So it's going to be a lot of traveling today. A couple of meetings in Tel Aviv and uh, yeah, tomorrow night, New York City for the week. A little bit nervous about the cold, but I have an amazing, amazing week lined up. So here we go. Made it to Jerusalem and it is significantly colder here. But then I remember what the temperature is in New York. Holy cow, I don't know how I'm gonna deal with that cold. Malcha Mall, where I'm meeting Shlomo. But it is a beautiful morning, temperature aside. This is the first time I'm in Malcha Mall since like high school. Seriously, man. Okay, so Malcha Mall, I think Malcha Mall, I don't know if it's true anymore, but it used to be like one of the biggest malls in the Middle East. Is that true? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I remember hearing that once. Okay, my camera is not behaving today. Hold on a minute. All right, so I am sitting here in Malcolm Mall. Not many people can get me to Malcolm Mall at 9.30 in the morning. What time do we meet? Shlomo Mervis, who you guys have met uh, previously. But I think this is the first time we're doing an interview on a vlog after I've officially become an advisor to the company. True. Make a cheers. Here, grab a cup. Cheers. I think I first heard of uh, Intelligo and of you from a year. Right. A thousand years ago. And you were like this, I want to say brand, this person I kept hearing of, Shlomo Mervis. And like I said, I know your cousin from elementary school, but like I, we, we didn't meet for a long time. And then I heard it again from Yair. And I just kept kind of hearing about Intelligo. Then I met you. The rest is history. No, but seriously, tell me what you are, what your story is, what's Intelligo, what's your background? Talk to me. I'm shutting up now. <laughs> Intelligo is a background check company. Yes. Um, I was told, by the way, that I don't look at people when I interview them, so now I'm going to look at you. Yes. <laughs> Intelligo is a background check company. Background checks. Yes. Why? Because background check is a major part of the business world today because the whole world is about mitigating risk. Okay. And it's a dangerous world out there. You want to know who you're doing business with. It's very dangerous. And one of the biggest problems today is that the people that suffer most about problematic situations of risk are small and medium-sized businesses who sadly can't afford comprehensive background checks today because of the price. They also can't afford to make a mistake. Exactly. Right. One mistake will kill your business. 100%. Compared to a large corporation that if it'll do a mistake, they'll deal with it. Right. So my passion is not only to create a more safer environment for business and to have a, have a business with trust, trusty people, which I think is crucial, but it allow the people that really need the service of background checks that can't suffer a mistake of dealing with the right person if they right. do business with a higher right person. I want to allow them to have access to a comprehensive background check. Okay. So talk to me about the pre intelligo background check. What happens today in the world? Now, I don't know what's going on my camera, but it's annoying me. What happens today in the world if I am the U.S. government? Or if I'm, whatever, I'm a tech company, okay? I'm Uber. So the U.S., great two examples. The U.S. government has to run around two and a half million background checks for the purpose of clearing. A year. A year. Two and a half million. Wow, that's insane. Done by manual service providers. Okay. Right now they have a backlog of over half a million people who get a salary, except to job, get a salary, but can't work because they don't have clearance. Wow. Only that costs the government over a billion dollars a year. Not the cost of running a background check, the cost of that they can't work. And then add the cost of a background check, which is crazy by itself. Wait, so just curious, why can't they do the background check before they hire them? Because then they'll lose the good people. Got it. So they're hiring someone, they're starting to pay them a salary, but they can't start working because they don't have clearance. Right. So they're losing a billion dollars a year just on that. Okay, and then how does the actual... And actual the process work? itself is over six months until you accept it. And even the process itself, I, ha I said with the head of Borders and Customs in the US, former head of Borders and Customs, he told me, it can't be, when I'm looking into risk, risk is not, does my name appear on one of the blacklists or do I have a criminal background? Risk has to be defined by the position where you're going to. How do you define that risk? It has to be a tailor-made solution. At the end of the day, is there anything I need to know? About yes. This and I have to think smartly about it, not like just a technical thing. I want to really understand this person. And I think the great thing about big data today is I can really analyze a person in a, very, in a variety of different angles and get a perspective analytic-wise, how does he compare to other people in the market today? And that's a real risk component. So who is your, I mean, everybody is your target, but let's just focus for one second. Who is your ideal target kind of audience for this technology that you're building? And let's talk about the technology in a second, but who's your ideal target? The largest market is HR, pre-hiring. It's the biggest thing because you want to hire talent, but not only talent, you want to hire good people. But it's also pre-investment. Pre-investment is our target market today. Um, very accessible market. It's also governments. Governments are just on the pre-investment side. At the end of the day, you invest in people, especially in the VC, but also in the hedge funds. You can invest in the best company in the world. If the CEO, a great example is Yahoo, yeah, the Uber. hired a CEO, Uber. Uber. <laughs> yeah. Even a simple um, example, like the, C the former CEO of Yahoo lied about his CV, about his degree. Super thing, but it's the, the amount of money they lose because of it is crazy, and that's a simple check. But looking at Uber, any 
person with a personality issue, with a management issue. Um, I can give you a lot of examples for large companies. Snapchat. Yeah. Yeah. Groupon, a lot of examples. Okay. For, put aside the US government, maybe because they're bureaucratic, whatever. But if I'm a, an HR person today, I want to run a background check. What am I doing pre Intelligo? You go to one of the hundreds of service providers there in the market. You ask for a price quote, which will take two days to get a price quote. Then you'll order it. Then you'll wait another 10 to 15 business days until you get a report. And then it'll take you another 10 business days to review the report. So ridiculous. Ridiculous. In 1981, ridiculous. Right. Okay, and Intelligo? Our goal is to make things simple. I love simplicity. You know what Da Vinci said? No. Simplicity. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Amazing. Jo Jobs quoted that all the I love that quote, by the way. Amazing. Right? If, if people think, I'm going to add more bells and whistles, more features. No, if you simplify something, if I have one button on an app, that is the most brilliant app in the world. If it could do what it needs to do with one button, right. brilliant. Right? If you could simplify things, that's the most sophisticated thing. Okay. So that's exactly our goal. I want everything to be simple, but very efficient and user-friendly. So it's a SaaS model. You access online. You run a search by yourself. You define whatever you want, however you want. You'll get the reports immediately in a one hour instead of 10 business days, one hour. You have every You'll get an initial report and a full report in 48 hours because it depends on the data providers of the sources we get. How, easy is, it, how easy is it to digest that report? To review, yeah. in 30 seconds you get the general picture. 30 seconds, that's the thing. And even the payment process in a second. Everything is simple. What? Do, you, do you want to talk? We talk about pricing. Or you want to talk about it right now? They'll be pricing important. is one I would. Just, I mean, I'm not going to mention numbers. Right. You, you but we're killing the market. We're talking about cutting it by half. Okay. But well, I mean, let's. I mean, this is a discussion we should have. I guess um, it's always that balance between offering an affordable product and positioning yourself as a non-premium service. We got to talk about that. But it's a discussion off camera. But I. But on that topic, if I want medium-sized businesses and small-sized businesses to use this product, you need to be affordable. And only for business-wise, I really want this to create. An impact. Maybe you could have pricing uh, tiers. Sure. We'll talk about it. Not for now. Not Different for you. Approaches. <laughs> okay. Uh, so talking about the company, how many people work at the company now? Right now we have 34 people. Who's your favorite marketing advisor? He lived full. <laughs> Number one. I'm, only, I'm the only one also. <laughs> okay, so uh, no, but. Uh, Highly recommended. <laughs> how many people work at the company, you said? 34 people. 34 people, and you're in Petah Tikva. Petah Tikva. Selling like to, focusing on the US market. A lot of interest from the European and Asian market right now. We're debating when's the right time to move to those markets. Okay. And what would you say the majority of the team is today? More engineers, sales, marketing, all engineers? No, right now sales and marketing, we're half of the team. <laughs> Nice. Um, okay. Which is also an indication about the product because clients are running, running after us. Yeah, I mean, we can't say names, obviously, but I mean, I can tell you, I don't know if you can't say any names, but like the, the people and the organizations and the institutions and the companies that have reached out to you, I've seen the emails. You show, like, I, I, it boggles my mind. I don't, and especially that you're not doing any marketing. How do these people even find you? It's crazy. It's crazy. And thank God we have a problem now that how do we do, how do we serve this amount of clients in a good way? Because right. there are too many of them. It's unbelievable. So that's a good problem to have. But the majority of the team is technology and product, okay. R&D. That's interesting. Okay, cool. I mean, I, I, you told me that you're releasing a, a new version, which will blow this version out of the, out of the water. Completely. But I, I saw the, the current version, and it looked right out of like, I'm trying to think of a, a TV show that like you would see that kind of thing. And it's like very, it takes this thing called background checks, which is like the opposite of sexy. It makes it sexy. Completely. From now on, the heads of operational due diligence or head of due diligence or compliance will have an NSA headquarter in their company. It's, it's like, literally not, gonna I'll look that you, way. I'll tell you what, what TV show I would be in. I would see your your the current product, and I haven't even seen the new product. I'd see the current product in a show like 24. Exactly, completely. Yeah, you know, that's a great show. What happened to that show? Anyway, um, okay, so talk to me about like company, you know, challenges and growth and everything like that. You raised, recently you raised? We raised um, recently a Series A of $5.7 million. We raised also a seed round. Now we're about to raise potentially very large rounds, a lot of interest on that side. Um, yeah. uh, again, all inbound. All inbound. A ton of inbound interest. I mean, the name, but also not, to be clear, like, listen, I'm, I'm not objective, I love the company, but I mean, the people that are reaching out to you are actually, it's like insane. Thank God, thank God. It's really insane. And, and I really it. think we yeah. can do something big there, and that's our passion. Well, I wouldn't, uh, I would say I wouldn't join a company that didn't have a big vision. Uh, there's, no, there's really, honestly, jokes aside, like, I, the first thing I would say to any entrepreneur is focus and, not, you know, you have to figure out your target, but really the target here is the world. Completely. It's Every one of company, our challenges. Right. Every just, company needs a background check. Right. Everybody. So that's huge. All right, man. Well, listen, like I said, off camera, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm excited to be part of this, this ride. It's, it is. It's, it's going to be big. I'm very excited about it. And, and the truth is, like, anybody that's watching this and that I've introduced to Shlom, Shlomo 2 in the last, you know, I, I, I always say, you know, it's about people and, and I'm a big fan of you uh, and a big fan of this vision so I'm, I'm excited to be along for the ride and yeah let's just go kick butt man amazing thank all you right, though all right cool
All right, so first of all, it's pouring in Tel Aviv, words I don't say often. Second of all, I'm parked outside of Mitos, about to go meet Jared Cash, who was originally introduced to me uh, via a good friend, Israel Schachter. Uh, we met several months ago. He was running an agency back then, made a couple of tens of intros for him into the Israeli uh, kind of landscape. He then sold his company, it was acquired, and now he's a VC. So we're having a follow-up and uh, seeing if there are any synergies and if we can collaborate, so that's going to be exciting. I'm kind of dreading going out into the rain, though. It's kind of crazy out there. After this, uh, I have another meeting, an interview, actually, with a really cool company that I've been uh, in touch with since day one called Infinigro. It's kind of a marketing platform, uh, and they're kind of embracing the whole interview thing for their content strategy, which I'm a big fan of. When you interview someone, it's a very powerful thing because kind of build a relationship with that person. You get traffic when they, you know, share it out, and you get validation because, you know, generally, if you interview cool people, everyone around you is impressed. So it's a really cool return on your investment to interview people. I wrote a whole post on that. It's, it's a good strategy. So um, he's interviewing me after this, and that's going to be great. After that, I have a call with uh, a new but dear friend, a rabbi actually, Rabbi Yitzi Wiener, who I recently connected with and who uh, contributes to sites like Forbes and Inc. and Entrepreneur and BuzzFeed and Huffington Post and many others. Really, really cool guy. He um, just wrote about uh, Home Talk on BuzzFeed and now we're working on a post about Prove for Huffington Post. So really, really exciting stuff. Really good guy. Very much, uh, I, would, I would say, we, we kind of share the whole love of giving and business um, in common. So that's going to be cool. I'm very excited to talk to him. And then, yeah, tomorrow's Prove Day and tomorrow night, New York. So I'm complaining about the weather here, but I'm, I'm actually genuinely scared of the, the cold in New York City. But I am very excited uh, to, go, to go to New York. Coming back here to Israel, I'm going to be in New York for one week. Coming back to Israel and pretty much a month, exactly a month later, heading to Melbourne. I was correct, it's not Melbourne, it's Melbourne, Australia, for the first time ever. Really excited about that. So, uh, you know, you can expect some pretty awesome footage over the next couple of weeks here on the vlog. All right, now I'm gonna get out of the car and go into the rain and uh, get a little wet. I'm like a four minute walk from Mitos. I assume I'm gonna get there dripping. So here we go, I hope the camera survives. So I was finishing a meeting here at Mitos, and you're gonna meet who I was meeting with, Jared Cash. I'll be out here in a minute, but this guy comes over to me. First of all, he's very tall. How tall are you? Six four, I think. Wow. One meter ninety four. Play basketball? I used to play. Wasn't right. too good at it. All right, so he comes over to me and he goes, "Hello, right?" And I, I, we've never met. We've never met. No, Facebook we haven't. Thing. Just Facebook. Seven years ago, maybe six or seven. Yeah, seven years ago, I bought my house and I needed a shed for my house. And I tweeted and I said I needed a shed and kept our plastic. A massive. It's not even. You, I can't even say an Israeli company. You guys are global. Massive leader in the plastic space right. literally reached out on Twitter and sent me a I can't even describe to you how big of a shed they sent me like it's like a freaking house still today it's standing outside my house and he was the one who, who approved that you were you right. marketing yeah absolutely I saw your tweet actually and uh, we took it from there with my colleague the from the US story I think that there, I've had some really cool stories happen on Twitter and over you know, social over the years. That is definitely up there, though. I, I, what, what went on behind the scenes? I'm genuinely. You remember the story, though? Yeah, absolutely. How, what happened? You, you actually, you were, you saw the tweet? I think Jason from the US saw the that's tweet. Right, that's right. Jason Williams. Jason, Jason Williams. Williams yeah, right. Absolutely. Oh my God. He's my colleague, and um, well. I mean, you know, we were just starting with uh, the whole uh, social uh, online scene. And then I wrote a blog post about it, right? Yeah, right, and looking for bloggers. And then you came up with your tweet and said, hey, this is a guy who uh, knows his way in till online. Today, till today, I swear to you, till today when I speak globally about how a brand can leverage social media. So I talk about the Red Bulls, I talk about tech companies, but I always say, just to be very clear, you do not have to be a tech company or a global, well, you guys are a global brand, but you don't have to be a well-known Red Bull in order to leverage social media properly and make people actually genuinely love your brand. And I give Kepler Plastic as an example, and I say, I will never, ever buy from a competitor, of, till today, I will never buy from a competitor of Kepler because of that. And you know what, like, of course, you know, people say to me, oh, well, I, you know, if I tweeted that I wanted a shed, they won't just send me a shed. And I was like, okay, I understand PR aspect of it, but. It, I don't care that they sent me the shed. What I care about was that you were listening. That's what's most impressive. That Kepler Plastic even, even listens to what people say. And the fact that, you know, Jason saw that. I don't even, Jason followed me. I don't even know how the whole thing went down, but that was one of the coolest, coolest stories. Until today, I used the shed. It's amazing, dude. I think for us, it was the real first experience of what uh, social media can do and what impact it can have on our customers. I am so happy you came, hello. You came over to say hello. I'm so happy. But remind me your name. David Green. David Green. Thank you for the shed, man. Nice seven years you. old, but thank you. And I'm. Fine. 
Brian and me. Let's, yeah. let's, let's actually sit down and have coffee and, and let me hear more about you, about you and about your... It's amazing. Thanks for coming okay. over, man. I appreciate Thank it. You. All right. That was the coolest story ever. That guy, I'm telling you, <laughs> seven years ago, he just came over to me, recognized me in the restaurant. That was super cool. This right here is Jared Cash, who uh, Israel Schachter introduced us oh, like a year ago, maybe? Yeah. Something like that. And last we met, he was raising funding for his startup, which has since been acquired. And now he's looking to deploy capital and partner with Israeli startups in what spaces, would you say? So media and advertising are our focus is. Uh, the company is Big Block. It's a production agency based out in Los Angeles, uh, developing TV commercials for brands like ESPN, uh, Victoria's Secrets, Small BMW. Brands. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And so, you know, with our, our expertise and background in, in the marketing and media world, um, now we're deploying uh, myself and a few other individuals worldwide looking for technology startups. All right, so a little bit of a background on you, because how old are you? 24. You're 24 years old. So, like, most people your age are, like, chilling, I don't know, on the beach. You have now founded how many companies? So, so this Time Flash was the company I founded. Um, I was involved in another startup called JSwipe, um, which was also fired. Wasn't one of the founders, but involved, involved. Okay. And then you sold this. I mean, yeah. And, and, and by the way, it runs. I'll, I'll tell family. you, it does. It does. And simultaneously to you know, working with all these startups, I was triple majoring at the University of Florida um, in film, advertising, anthropology. First triple major at the School of Communication. Dude, that's incredible. So, like I said, it does run in the family. Who's your dad? My, my father's Peter Cash, um, PhD in, in Jewish education, actually. Yes, That's random. yes, from, from Yeshiva, Yeshiva University. Oh wow! Um, ultimately, working in the biotech sector. I'm currently on a drug from Hebrew University. He's founded how many companies? Two dozen. Like 24 companies. Biotech. Biotech. Many of them sold. Oh, oh, how many of them were success stories? To be honest, you'd, you'd have to interview him, but I can tell you uh, a little little bit of success. A little bit. All right. And <laughs> he's written books and written yes. books about the thing yes. that, I, that we talked about that I'm writing a book about now, which is giving in business. So I'm nobody. So for me to say it's not a big deal, but a guy like that who says that he embraces giving and gives unconditionally Absolutely. is a, it's a little bit more of a like, kind of validated statement than when I say it. But anyway, um, so just if an Israeli uh, startup or VC or anybody in the Israeli landscape is watching, hit me with your kind of like, not even elevator, but just tell me what you're looking a for. Absolutely, absolutely. We're we're looking to, you know, really come on board with interesting technology startups, you know, specifically in advertising, media, marketing, and be an active partner, not only, you know, in terms of capital, but also uh, business development with a lot of the brands that we work with, um, a lot of the marketing executives that we have in the, our New York, LA offices, coming from top, some of the best advertising agencies in the world. So looking to really roll up our sleeves and, and work hand in hand. Is it officially a VC? Is it officially an agency with some capital? Like what do you, how do you define yeah, So it evolved from originally being a family office to now we're actually create, creating a fund um, and, and bringing on some other investors. Uh, so we're excited. Sounds super cool. What, where can I read more? What's the website? BigBlockLA.com. BigBlockLA.com. And if a startup or whoever's watching this and wants to reach out to you and thinks there's kind of synergy here, what's the best way to reach out to you? Email jared.cash at bigblockla.com. Something, some joke here about your last name being Cash. Yes, yes. That's definitely, yeah. definitely. What's with a K? I'll, I'll, I'll tell the story. It's, it's a great story. Uh, my great-grandfather, when he came to America through Ellis Island, he gets to Ellis Island and the guy at the, the desk, why, why are you coming to America? And he said, to make money, to bring the rest of my family over. And he said, uh, Cash, that, that'll be your last name. That's really funny because I, you think, you're going to think I'm making this up, but I'm actually not making this up. My mom, when she came to the U.S. and she her last name was Cone, they asked her her last name, and she's like, uh, I love Superman Kent. Literally. That's, that's, that's uh, I'm not kidding. Unbelievable. True story. Unbelievable. <laughs> it's funny. Anyway, dude, it's amazing. I'm happy we got the chance to catch up now. But uh, listen, man, you're, you're like, you're just like one of these guys that like, you're 24 years old. It's so clear that you're going to have, I mean, you already do, but you're going to have a, a pretty uh, impressive and successful uh, career. So remember the little guys, okay? Don't forget oh, the little guys. Please, please. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> no, but you know, the, tr the truth is like, you know, it's like it's such a perfect example, right? So when we met last time, and we, we got to wrap up because I got to Minute, but we met last time. I didn't have any context on this guy, right? You know, Israel Schachter introduced us, and I was like, sure, Israel wants me to meet him. I'll meet him. I had zero contact. And we met, and he's like, listen, basically, I'm raising capital. Can you introduce me to investors? And I made 20 introductions, literally, right. it, it, at the restaurant. It was, it, so I made like a whole bunch of introductions to investors. And again, I wanted, again, not that, not only did I not want anything, but had he said to me, let me pay you, I would never, you know, I wouldn't, it didn't even cross my mind. I wouldn't, but it turns out that like this guy, his father's somewhat of a celebrity, and I definitely want to meet his dad, you know, get insights from him on writing books on, on business. And he's doing amazing things now in the VC landscape. And I know for a fact, the 
you know, now I'm going to make more intros. But I know for a fact in the long term, we're going we're gonna to collaborate. There's no question. Absolutely. I don't know how. I don't know when. In the long term, I, I can tell you right now, I will continue. Again, this isn't, you know, a precondition, right? I will, I will do whatever I can do to help you. Thank I'm you. just telling you, it's, it's very clear that, like, our visions are aligned and we will Absolutely. collaborate in the future. So I'll tell you the, 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 the term that my dad coined, you know, around this, this philosophy, really, of, of opening up doors is the web of life. Web of, well, I like that. Yeah, the web Love of that. life. So the, the lighting here is really, I see that we're super <laughs> red. We look like we're, like, on fire. But it's all good. Anyway, we man. are on fire right yeah, now. I love it. This was a lot of fun. That steak was pretty ridiculous, right? Fantastic. All right, man. We'll, uh, we'll do it again when you get back to Israel. And meanwhile, Looking let's, forward. let's do that whole uh, email intro. Uh, absolutely, process. absolutely. Love it, man. All right, good luck. I made it home and put on my fleece and sweats trying to defrost. And it is literally, literally 50 degrees colder in New York. So I am quite terrified. Have I mentioned that? Tomorrow's proof day, tomorrow night, NYC. See you tomorrow.